We do the family morning thing, Christmas Day. I check my charts, <laughs> even though the markets are closed. The Asian session opened up last night, so I was looking at the, at the charts. So yeah, I had, had a breakfast with the family, hung out in the afternoon, watched uh, Casino Royale. That's one of my, me and my husband's favorites. So I watched that in the afternoon and chilled out with uh, some nice rum drinks. <laughs> and then, because um, you know, eggnog does need some rum. So it's very Christmassy. And then I actually went and caught uh, Big Eye with my bestie, so it was good. Big Eyes was actually a pretty good little movie. It's a new Tim Burton. So it was a good Christmas. Thank you very much. Hope you guys had a, a good Christmas, too. <clears throat> so what I thought I'd do today, uh, Big Eyes, Steve. It's Tim Burton's new movie called Big Eyes. Very interesting backstory to... Uh, it's a, it's a biopic. Yeah, yeah. I want to see... I want to see Wild next, and I do want to see Into the Woods. There's a lot of really good movies out. And uh, my really good friend from Boston's in town, and she's kind of my movie my movie going buddy. So I'm going to be catching up on a lot of movies here in the next week. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I love sitting and watching a movie. Love it. Especially in these new theaters with the nice, long, kind of lazy boy, loungy chairs. Only about 50 people. That's, that's where I go. It's nice. All right, so what I thought I'd do today is, is, is take a look at some of the basics of Forex trading today. Wow, you worked on the movie Wild last year? How cool is that? It was filmed in Oregon? Oregon is beautiful, Leo. Yeah, Oregon's beautiful. I've been over by the Rogue, spent some time in Grants Pass in that area. Um, yeah, I loved that area. It's beautiful. And I always joke, my friends who live there always say, don't tell anybody how nice it is here. We don't, we don't want anybody, uh, we don't want anybody coming. So, how cool is that? Very cool, Leo. So I know a lot of you may be totally new to the world of currencies and Forex. So just kind of a show of cyber hands, if you will. How, how many of you are completely new, completely new to, uh, to currencies and, and not just Forex currencies uh, Forex uh, the, the currency share ETFs okay cool all right so a lot of new all right now I guess I should also ask how many of you are interested in it you know how many of you are looking to you know and I don't I ever like to say supplant how many of you are looking to supplement what you're doing now with currencies because I think it's a terrific addition. I think it's an awesome addition. I'm never going to tell you guys to supplant what you're doing, unless what you're doing is an ineffective part of your trading. I'm never going to tell you, stop doing something that's working. But I love the idea of supplementing. I love the idea, and this is kind of my mantra, if you will, one mind, many markets. Or as I endearingly call it, ohm. <laughs> Oh, that's my sister. All right, so I'll talk to her later. All right. Um, it's family time. Hey, baby sis, I'm talking to a bunch of people about currencies. Can I call you back? Okay, mom's home, though. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay, I love you. Bye. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> that's my baby sis. She's like my VIP. All right, so... Yeah, so I thought, you know, this is kind of an illiquid day. We'll take a look at the markets. But, you know, you guys have been hanging out with me for a few weeks during our Monday, Wednesday, Friday Forex discussions. And I thought, you know what, let's let's break it down and, and talk about some some basics of Forex. And, and, and maybe, you know, demystify some of what's misunderstood. You know, and I thought this would be a great time to do it. And so... Here we go. What do you think? So if you guys have any questions, if you have some fears, if you have some aspects of the market that you're thinking, yeah, this is why I'm staying away, and um, tell me and, and we'll talk about it, you know? So I thought it would be a great time to do that. So, yeah, I'm actually looking to uh, maybe do some writing f for that site. I was actually talking to the folks over there at Daily FX. Yeah, and I'm possibly, I said, you guys don't have a woman writing. I see some estrogen on the site. 
So I might be doing a little bit of writing over there. We'll see. But I do writing for baby pips. I'm, I'm Queen Cleopatra over there. I love being a, a, a cartoon. They turn me into Cle Queen Cleopatra. So I love doing that. Do some commentary for Trade Station as a currency analyst over there. So yeah, I love, love my currency. So I thought, you know what? Let's talk a little bit about just some basics and as we're going through the market. What do you guys think? So let's let's start with some basics and, and the kind of the connective threads to maybe things you're already looking at because it's not that disconnected to the equities markets. You know, it's it's more it's more connected than you think. And the more you can find these connective threads, all of a sudden, you know, when I'm looking at currencies, I can talk to you about Visa or IBM to the weighting it has in the Dow, to the way the yen and the Dow interact, to the way you can look at the yen through the through the FXE, through the JY futures or the dollar yen. You know, obviously that, that brings up conversations about the US dollar. And it all starts and you know, so can I connect Visa or IBM to the dollar yen? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's what I mean by one mind many markets. You can kind of have this connective thread through multiple market types. And that's how I trade and manage my trading life. So a few things that freak people out about Forex. Let me let me address that first because I realize a lot of people are just flat out scared of Forex because they still think it's the wild, wild west. I don't know as of late of any market as scrutinized and as heavily right now regulated as Forex. They are They are really clamping down on what's going on in the Forex markets from uh, the way the brokers have to be funded to the way that the leverage has come down from 400 to 1 to now about 50 to 1. I mean, there's been a lot of changes in Forex from when you might have heard about it being the wild, wild west in 1999. And back in 99, when I trade the Euro US, I had about a five pip spread. Now the Euro trades maybe a pip and a half. Okay, so a couple things. We don't pay a ticket in, in Forex. There's no, there's no commission in a traditional sense in Forex, but you pay a spread. You do pay a spread. So whatever the difference is between the bid ask is, is what you're going to pay. That's your cost per trade. Um, for example, let me bring a new order up, new order ticket here. We'll drop it down to the uh, Euro US. And this is, this is your cost per trade. About, well, right now you can see where it's at. It's a half a pip spread. Again, this is a market that had a five pip spread when I was trading this in 99, 2000, 2001. So cost per trade is a little different. Your, your access to the market is very different. So when I'm talking about Euro US, think about the fact that the sun shines on the Forex market pretty much 24 hours a day. But the liquidity of different financial centers are different. So if I'm going to look at the Euro US today, you know, I'm not making any big time trades, making any big time decisions because darn near everybody but the U.S. is on bank holiday today. So this is not a fully participated market at the moment, meaning that I don't have, I think Paris is open. I don't have Frankfurt. I don't have London. You know, only the, the U.S. is open right now. So the typical trillion plus dollars per day that trades in the Forex market, not happening, not happening. So. In terms of fills, let me let's talk about you know what that means, Leo, because I saw you mentioned it's harder to get fills. Well, I will tell you, there's a I would have to ask when you're looking at your when are you looking to get filled? Because the rhythm of the Forex market, and I know a lot of you have seen this, uh, char these charts that I've shared with you before. Uh, a lot of what happens in the Forex market, the most liquid times, are between 8 a.m. Eastern and about 11.30 Eastern when Europe finally closes. So if you were to look at the typical pip movement for the Euro US, which is the biggest pair, it's, it's a major, it's the most major of the majors, and, and look at when this pair is most active. Take a peek. When is it most active? Basically between 8 a.m. and 11.30. And you'll notice from about 10 o'clock on from the 10 to 11 bar on we have a steady drop until it finally just has a last gasp around two o'clock I'll explain that in a moment and then it's just very quiet through Asia well if you're dealing with a market that's going to have a typical movement of about 
10 pips, maybe up to 14. This is about 68% of the time. You may find, relatively speaking, between about 4 p.m. till about 2 a.m. Eastern. This is all Eastern. I'm on the East Coast of the U.S. This is going to be a quieter time. The volatility picks up with the Paris Open, with the Frankfurt Open, with the London Open, with the Asian close at 4 a.m., and then again it picks up at 8 a.m. Now during the 8 to 9 candles, we're going to have what? That 8 to 9 hour can 8 to 9 a.m., that one hour span, 8.30 economic releases. Okay, the reason for a lot of this volatility is the U.S. dollar is impacted by the economic releases that, you know, if you, if you were to go to uh, the calendar, you know, what time are reports usually released? 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.15, 10 o'clock. So you can see that reflected in the volatility in the pair. I would say, you know, Leo, having been a trader in the Forex market, the futures market, and the stock market, my or and, and I don't I don't play favorites. I love all of them, you know. So one of the things I will say, being a trader of all of those and relatively speaking, trading the Forex the least. I've only been trading Forex since 99 2000. I've been trading Futures since 80, 88, and I've been trading equity since actively since the mid to late 90s. So, no other market gives me the access and the liquidity the Forex market does. I mean, the Forex market just dwarfs other markets in terms of size when you talk about the spot. So, when everybody else has a market that closes, I don't. My risk management is much more realistic in Forex than in any other market. So, I think the risk management is better too. As far as it's being expensive, you know, some of this stuff, Trevor, to your point, how can we set a stop loss? You can set a, a more real stop loss in a market that doesn't close than in one that does. I don't have to worry about gaps with the same frequency my futures and, and equities traders brethren do, you know. Dealing with a 24-hour market, though, you're right, can be very tricky because I've got to sleep, right? So that is tricky. And that's, again, when I'll go back. That's why during our times together, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I spend a lot of time in these graphs, you know, looking at the volatility and looking at the way in which I'm more likely to get that increase or decrease in volatility. So that's why I, I use these graphs so often, because between the economic calendar pinpointing when the volatility may increase because of hot zones, these economic releases, I can then time that with the kind of volatility I could see during those hours. And I've got a pretty good idea of when my entries, my stops, or my targets might be in play. Okay? So, you know, in terms of also building your Forex life around maybe an existing stock trading life, you know, part of what I would tell you to keep an eye on would be things you're probably watching already. Things like the Dow and the dollar, gold, crude, uh, the yen. These are things that you should be watching anyways as an equities trader. And they, and they feed right into being a Forex trader. So these are what I call the Forextra. You know, I have my Forex pairs. And my favorite pairs are typically uh, pairs that trade against the dollar. You know, anything versus the U.S. dollar is one of my favorites because I trade the U.S. dollar index so actively. The yen becomes very interesting in terms of Forex pairs. Anything versus the yen becomes immediately interesting because I like to trade the Dow uh, and, and Dow weighted, heavily Dow weighted stocks as well as the YM futures. Okay. And then I have this idea of Forextra. It's kind of Forex plus, the extra plus, the, plus the extra side of Forex. Uh, dollar index, the Dow, crude. Gold. You could even throw copper in there, but I typically don't. You can throw notes and bonds in there. You can throw um, a number. You know, I like throwing the Nikkei too. So these are four extra markets to me. So if you were to look at my quote board and what I'm monitoring, this first section at the top is my four extra. So in terms of ultimately where I'm going to focus on trades. And in terms of managing volatility, again, 
there's a reason I spend so much time in this in these graphs. Uh, Trevor, to your point, how volatile is the trading? You can see this is 68% of the time what the euro will typically do and when it will do it. If I were to tell you the euro is going to be somewhere between 8 and 14 pips between 5 p.m. Eastern until about 1 a.m. in the morning Eastern, right? And that between 2 and 11.30 a.m., I'm going to be between 18 and up to 38 pips. And then you're going to say, well, where could we fall along that pip amount? Look at the economic calendar. I know what days are going to be more volatile because I can look at the economic calendar. I know it's typical and I know it's high volatility based upon the study here. So yeah, I absolutely can get a gauge on the volatility. Now I'm in, I'm looking to get in Euro US dollar, but one of the positions I have right now is in the pound Aussie. I've got a position long right now in the pound Aussie and I'm just waiting for this market to hit another profit target for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm in this market right now. And I'm long the pound Aussie from the uh, 90, what am I long from? 91.25, 91.05, and 90.80. I'm long the pound Aussie. And I've already had one chance to take a 100 pip winner at an optional profit target at 91.80. Well, this pair behaves very differently than the Euro US. Take a look at the pip movement here. I was looking at a high end of pip movement on the Euro US of 38 pips. Look at this. This thing pretty much starts off in that area. And the rhythm is also very different. Do you see that? This has a pretty active Asian session because of the Australian dollar geographically being an Asian session currency. So every pair is going to behave differently. Okay, Every single one of these pairs is going to be very different in terms of, I shouldn't say very different, but it's going to be quite different in terms of, of its rhythm of the trading day and the pip movement. So, you know, if I were going to try to teach somebody about Forex, I'd probably spend most of my time on these graphs trying to explain what the pair does, when it does it, and how volatile it is, because that's, that lets you manage the risk and understand the personality of the pair. The pound Aussie isn't anything like the Euro US in rhythm or pip movement. But one of the biggest mistakes a lot of traders do, biggest mistake, okay? Here's the two biggest mistakes. They treat each hour of the trading day the same, and they treat each pair the same, okay? They treat each pair the same. So those are some of the bigger mistakes, right? So when we're going through the, the day here, and I'm teaching you what I'm doing and how I'm doing, and a big part of what I'm doing is based on the understanding of what the pair does, when it does it, and how much it could move by. And so kind of going back to your question, Trevor, that's how I deal with the 24-hour market. I pretty much know what it's going to do and when it's going to do it. And even, even more so, I can have what I call expected pip movement ranges that tell me how much I could expect a pair to move across the next 15, 30, 60, 240, or 1,440 minutes. So in other words, 30-minute chart, 50-minute chart, 30-minute chart, 1-hour, 4-hour, and daily chart. I've got a pretty good idea based upon underlying volatility and historical pip movement ranges, what I could see moving out across a pretty decent time horizon. So again, that's how you manage a, a market like this. Okay. All right. So what else? What else is what else is there to know with 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 currency trading? And again, it doesn't need to be forex because obviously, if I'm talking about, for example, the British pound U.S. dollar, which is a, a short that I have still open in this market. I'm actually short the pound from the uh, 5750 level. So I'm about 200 pips into this trade right now. But it doesn't matter if I'm talking about the, the pound versus US or the BP contract. Okay. Or FXB. You know, you can trade these currencies in a number of different ways and I haven't even talked about if you want to take options on the BP futures. You know, that's another alternative. All right. So remember that you don't have to play currencies through spot, through the forex per se. You can trade the currencies through futures and through ETFs, the currency share ETFs. So I, I try to bring that into the conversation more often when I'm talking to y'all. But uh, one of my favorite connective threads is you know 
looking at the Dow and looking at the yen. Looking at Dow and yen in terms of the risk environment. You know, the the expression of risk through the yen is is pretty amazing. It's it's hard to find a um, strong Dow without a weak yen. In fact, that's an awesome confirmation. It's an awesome confirmation. So again, something else to think about when you are maybe kind of adding the four, you know, since you guys are equities traders, great market to look at would be the dollar yen. Try to find a strong currency like the dollar right now and pit that against a weaker currency like the yen or the Aussie or the Canadian dollar. Okay, so let me uh, tackle a few questions here. And granted, you know, I wanted to have a quick session in terms of discussing what these aspects of the market are. You know, it is a quiet trading day, so, you know, no, no need just to kind of talk for the sake of talking. Not a lot here to be doing, I don't believe. I think this is a day that we manage our positions that we've already built and just realize that we're not really seeing truth or, or organization and, and I don't think we're seeing the beginning of any kind of realistic follow through till I see confirmation into next week and into the 5th of January. So I figure we'll you know, tackle some questions here today and I'll talk about some of my positions while we do it. All right, so do I trade mostly pairs, asked Trevor. Yes, I'd say 80% of my trading is currencies, but I'll throw currency futures in there, a little bit of currency share ETFs. But yes, uh, mostly what I do is is the spot, but I'm going to show you how you can use spot to trade all the other currencies. Where you ultimately express your currency trade, whether it be ETFs or futures or Forex, is is not important. It's the analysis. You know, so so whether you go futures, stocks, or or spot, doesn't matter. It's still very tradable. But you're going to manage most of it using the spot chart, at least the way I do it. Okay. So in terms of, again, do I trade mostly pairs? Absolutely, I do. I do, Trevor. Uh, Brandon asks, is there a big difference among the trading platforms for Forex? Um, you know, it's such a personal thing. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. I've heard a lot of good things about a number of companies, and you guys test them out. Uh, I don't recommend putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. Uh, I have multiple Forex accounts. I have Forex accounts with FXCM, uh, which was actually, which bought out my original broker IBFX. Uh, trade Station's great. You can trade Forex on TOS. You can trade Forex on interactive brokers. Uh, FXCM is probably the largest. That and Oanda are probably two of the largest Forex brokers, FXCM and Oanda. Um, most of you will probably be trading Forex through a platform called MT4, which is what this is right here. So most of you will probably be trading through MT4, which I'll be happy to show you how to navigate. Very simple, free, platform that your brokers will uh, give you access to. By far the most popular trading platform in this arena. Okay, can you trade options on Forex? Absolutely, yes. In fact, the way I trade options and currencies is by using the weekly chart. You, you can, you can trade uh, options in, on the futures. Uh, there's another uh, way you can trade options in Forex by using the, the uh, Forex options from the uh, ISC, the International Stock Exchange. Not a liquid way to do it, but it is uh, Forex options. Absolutely, there are ways to do it, no doubt. But uh, futures options are probably the easiest way to do it. Okay, probably the easiest way to do that. And, and not that dissimilar to what you're probably already doing in equities, Trevor, not dissimilar at all. Expiration dates and strikes and all that good stuff. <laughs> it's pretty basic. I wouldn't call myself an action, expert at options trading the way I would consider Henry or, or John, but absolutely you can trade options in, in, a, in pretty much the same manner uh, as, as easily on futures because they're very liquid. Not as much on the currency share ETFs. Uh, not as liquid. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the carry, John. To me, carry, the interest rate differential, is gravy. It's, it's benefit. It, it is a cost per trade in some situations. You know, so it's not something I go seeking out. It's not, it should not never be the sole justification for a trade, but I, I will take advantage of it when it's there and I'm going to be cognizant, cognizant of it if it adds to my cost per trade, that swap or that carry. Absolutely. Okay. So 
you know, in terms of some of these basics, and I want to just kind of do a little Q&A today because today's not a particularly active day for me. You know, I think Henry's given you guys a lot of good advice this morning, which is, you know, gauge some things, keep your radar active, but today's not the kind of day to go pulling the trigger. Not really, you know. So those are some of the uh, the points here. As far as um, walking y'all through a trade, you know, probably next week would be better, but I do that every session. So um, not that I'm against that, but every session I walk you guys through some of what I'm in. I mean, the pound... Aussie is the most recent entry that I've taken. Uh, that was a 240-minute swing by that I took on a pullback to 91.25, 91.05, and, and ultimately my conservative entry at 90.80. My target's waiting at 91.80 and, and 91.95. So it's just a classic swing by for me, which, by the way, now I won't look for those entries because this is a little bit more of a transitional market moving in a sideways chop. So probably easier for me to walk you guys through that you know kind of in an ongoing conversation and you can check out the past replays in the members area to kind of get an idea of what I've been doing so yeah we definitely have been doing that throughout the throughout the sessions and I'll be happy to keep doing that but again today I just wanted to kind of tackle some Q&A because I realize a lot of you may, may be wandering into this market for the very first time and again my main pairs are U.S. dollar correlated pairs because right now I am absolutely a U.S. dollar bull. So I'm looking for ways I can continue to buy dollars against the Canadian dollar, against the Australian dollar, against the euro, uh, against the pound, and against the yen. Those are my primary dollar buys. I'm not doing it against the New Zealand dollar. Uh, I have not been playing the ruble. I wouldn't even recommend that. I know a lot of people like the peso, but... That the peso is not accessible through that many platforms, so while it's not an exotic, so so to speak, uh, it's not necessarily widely available. So I try to stick with those widely available, actively traded pairs. And you know, the place that I know, the way I know something's widely available is I look at the Bank of International Settlements, the BIS.org, for what pairs are most actively actively traded: um, dollar, uh, euro, U.S. dollar, dollar yen and the pound are, are very actively traded. Coming in after that would be pairs like dollar uh, versus Canada, uh, Aussie US, dollar Swissy. You know, those are other pairs that are very popularly traded. Um, Aussie, Aussie Yen is a very popular one. So there, there are pairs that are traded more often than not, but still, just the fact that it's liquid is not going to necessarily mean that there's a trade set up. But, you know, you start to wander into less liquid pairs, kind of more exotic, say for example like a like an Aussie versus Swiss franc, you know, or a Euro versus New Zealand dollar. They're very liquid in terms of the comparison to liquidity in the futures market or equities markets volume, but in terms of forex trading volume they're not as liquid. So one of the main things that I'm going to talk a lot about and I have in the past is this idea of an individual currency story because unless you have an individual currency story like right now big one for me is US dollar and euro buy US dollars sell euro a lot of what I'm going to I'm going to do is is colored by the fact that I have a very strong opinion of what those two individual currencies are going to do you know so that's what helps guide my pair selection for sure okay all right, so Brandon, as far as the different spread differences among the brokers, I wouldn't go tripping over one or two pips here or there. Uh, make sure that you're not just looking at the spread, but you're looking at um, how they behave during volatile hours. So it's a it's a complicated conversation. You know, granted, you want a narrow sped, spread because that is a cost per trade issue, but you don't want to go chasing that in exchange for a lot of wicks and illiquidity and just flat out bad order execution. You know, I've got a trader who trades with a broker. I'm going to leave the broker's name out of it. They got a fill. He, this person got a fill on a, on, a, on a market that we didn't. Saw a print that we didn't, that most of the group didn't. But then at the same time, he got trailing stopped out on another print that was 26 pips out of the mar out of the way from my print so he got trailing stopped out you know so you know it it, it works both ways and i want to caution everybody to that 
So again, I think a lot of what we're going to be talking about as I kind of debunk a lot of these myths, Calvin, to your point, is not all 24 hours are created equal, traded equal, if you will. And you're, you're usually, and this is going to vary from pair to pair, your illiquid, your illiquid hours are usually going to be the Asian session, but not always, but not always. So there, is, there are no after hours, so to speak. What they are, are if you're going to look in order of, of participation, uh, Europe, Europe and the UK, okay, and then you've got the US, and then you've got Asia, in that order. So your most actively traded hours are going to be typically, not always, uh, 8 to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That's going to be your most typical. And again, it's going to change. You know, I was showing you guys the Euro US, and here's the pound Aussie. They look very different. You know, here's the dollar uh, yen. Very popular pair. And again, it looks different. It doesn't drop off as much in Asia, does it? It really doesn't lose that much. It's pretty consistent throughout the trading day, but we see the highest volatility again between 8 and 11 a.m. So every one of them has, and I think, again, some of the mistakes that traders make that make them feel uncertain about their footing in the Forex market is they treat 8 to 11 a.m. the same way they would view 8 to 11 p.m. Wrong, wrong, wrong. They treat each pair the same. They expect typical pip movement in one pair to extend to the next. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So these are the kind of things that I think once you understand uh, make your forex trading that much more accurate. A lot of what we talk about here in the room Monday through uh, Monday, Wednesday, and, and Friday. Um, I don't do a lot of currency trading through TOS. Uh, most of mine is done through the MT4 brokers that I have in TradeStation. So, um, yeah, I, I would not uh, that I would not know, my friend. They're 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 the best when it comes to options trading. Uh, I've been getting very curious about interactive brokers. I've been with TradeStation a long time. So I do like these uh, all-in-one brokers, though, uh, what I call the all-in-ones. I do like them very much. Your, your tosses, your thinkorswims, um, your trade stations, your IBs, I do like them very much because I do believe in trading all the markets. I would never want you to give up what you're doing to trade instead Forex only. In fact, I would never recommend any one market. You're a trader of everything. That's really the true power and, and longevity in your career. Now, some brokers do have a ticket fee. That's that's correct. Some do. Uh, Robert, I have seen that. And you have to you have to find out what they offer in in exchange because you got to remember if you're talking about a full-size lot if their spread is narrower, a full-size lot if you if you're dealing with something with just a a two pip spread, okay? That's 20 bucks on average. $20 US dollars on average. So you got to think what that two and a half dollars means and are you getting a narrower spread? So if you're getting a narrower spread, yeah, exactly. Robert, to your point, yeah, so it's worth paying the 250 right? No doubt. On a full-size lot, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of traders are taking a good hard look at interactive brokers. And being a competitive marketplace, you'll probably find that a lot of other brokers are going to start following suit. We can't direct our own order flow in Forex. I can't wait till that happens. If somebody told me I could pay a higher ticket but hit the bid or hit the ask, but I hit the bid or hit the ask, be on the bid or be on the ask versus always paying the spread, I would in a second. We can't direct our own order flow yet. I would love that to happen, but that's the cost for, uh, you know, basically not usually having a commission and just paying the spread. So are there any special requirements? No, Trevor, no. It's probably one of the lowest... Most brokers will let you open an account for about 5K. It's probably one of the most its lowest uh, initial opening accounts that I know of in any market, which is not necessarily good, uh, especially back when we were dealing with 400 to 1 margin. But uh, you're usually going to be somewhere in the vicinity of 50 to 1. But uh, no special requirements, no, not at all. Not at all. So, uh, gang, I just wanted to talk to you about 30 minutes today. I'm not really in market trading mode. I'm mostly managing my existing positions. Uh, looking for some some new trades. I think we talked about most of these on Wednesday. Nothing's changed since then. So, like I said, I thought we'd kind of have a little 
educational breakout session, talk about some of the positions I've got, what are some of my main focuses, like the dollar strength. And, uh, you know, what I, I do want to do is uh, give you guys my email address. It's roggyhornerblog at gmail.com. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. Now, in terms of the different brokers, gang, I, I will tell you, I don't keep up with a lot of the scuttlebutt with the brokers. I don't know. Barry, Rakesh, I mean, those are, I would tell you, I would prefer Rakesh, not that I have anything against FXCM. They they bought my 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 original broker, IBFX, and they're the they're one of the largest brokers in Forex, FXCM and Oanda. But I would rather you go with Trade Stage or Think or Swim, personally, because that's going to give you access to all the markets, which I think is much, much better. Yes, there is a swap, Gregory. Swap, carry, yes. It could either pay you or it could take it could be a cost. So you gotta understand the swap. Absolutely. It could be a call, and it depends on the interest rate of the different central banks of the currency that you're buying. But that makes this sound so much more complicated than it is. Um, but yes, there is. There is. Okay. So as far as my charts, gang, uh, I'm going to leave that to another conversation. I just really wanted to talk about just some of the basics of Forex here today and just kind of a, have a quick short session, but at least catch up with you guys this Friday. So, um, I, I imagine the session's being recorded, and if it's not, I did record it, and I'll post it on my blog. So if you guys want to review it, you're more than welcome. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know, and I'll be happy to address it the next time we sit down. But uh, I'll post this conversation in the in the uh, on my blog there later on. So um, just to answer your question really quickly, uh, Dave, um, these are my grab candles. And you can learn about, I'm going, give, I'm going to give you a link for those of you curious what's going on here on my charts. I'm going to give you a link right now. There's a link that I have special for those traders who are just kind of starting off with looking at the way that I trade. And you can check that out right here. Uh, start here is the link. And there you go. That's it right there. I think it'll go a long way with uh, explaining what it is that's going on on my charts. Um, do I have to follow economic issues? Uh, themes, Trevor, yes. And I do talk about how to follow themes and economic releases. Absolutely, yeah, I, uh, you do. But they're, they're much larger and they're not, as, they're not as flighty as some of the themes that can be in the, in the other markets like equities. They're much larger. Uh, as far as the pit movement chart, uh, what's the color on what's the difference in color there? Oh, okay. So this is the entire range, Dave. So you, you see the light green? That's the entire range, the high to low range, about 68% of the time. The band across each one is the average. So this so uh, here you go. Here it is. That's the legend. There you go. It'd be helpful if I, if I scroll down to that, right? So here's a chart and then here's the legend. That's how that's explained. There you go, Dave. Thanks for clarifying. My pleasure, of course. Okay, gang, so you have my email address. You have a couple of links. Let's start off with that, and we'll keep this conversation going. I don't want to bog you down with too much stuff, but I thought, you know what? This would be a perfect time to kind of downshift and, you know, talk about some basics of, about what it is that I do as a Forex trader, or really as what I consider myself truly to be. It's just a, a currency trader and the connective thread to a lot of other markets that I like in the futures and even equities. So again, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Please don't hesitate. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on Monday. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, kind of close the room down here in, in, a, in a few minutes. Uh, that's it for today. I'm the last, uh, <laughs> last presenter for today. So uh, you guys got to hang out with Henry and Carolyn and myself. And uh, I think that's a, that's a pretty darn good Friday. So it was awesome to see you all. And We'll catch up on Monday, okay? All right, gang. Take care.